The film follows Becky and Hunter who climb an abandoned radio tower 2,000 feet in the air to scatter the ashes of a loved one. And that climb and that event goes horribly wrong when the ladder breaks and they find themselves trapped at 2,000 feet with no way down. The script was sent to me and really I thought, could I do something like this? Would I be able to do something like this? And it kind of scared me, which only made me want to do it more. As soon as I heard about it, I was over the moon excited. And it was also right in the middle of 2020 when nobody had worked in a long time. Everybody had been stuck inside their house for a long time. So just the idea of going and filming a very fun action movie in the desert outside with other people sounded like so much fun. The film is based on a real tower. It's based on a tower um, in Arizona that was the fourth tallest structure in the US. And you can get people up them and you can kind of do that, but you can't get a crew up there with them is the problem. And then the challenge becomes, how do you shoot a film that takes place at 2,000 feet? We found this location and it had this great landscape, looked amazing, it had this drop off. It's a nice view, huh? And it had just enough room to structurally uh, build out an actual 100-foot tower on the top of a 2,000-foot cliff, and the girls went up it and we filmed it from that height. Scott communicated how much he wanted to shoot practically with us actually out there, actually high up. That's the kind of thing you dream of being a part of as an actor, because it makes my job a lot easier to actually be burning in the sun, uh, terrified that I'm going to fall down to my death. Are you okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Preparing for the physical side of the film, I actually worked with two personal trainers, especially because it was post-quarantine, so I don't think any of us had exercised too much prior to doing this movie, so it was a good kick in the ass, too, to get back on that train and make sure that we were physically able to handle the stunts that were going to be involved. I was getting abs <laughs> in the shortest amount of time. We knew we were going to be filming in the desert where it's very hot, doing a lot of stunts. So he had me work out outside in sweatshirts and sweatpants and with as much clothing on as possible. So I really could get used to what it was going to be like to be so physically active in such extreme temperatures. We were going to film in these crazy conditions. Once they're up there, it's very hard for me as a director to really like, access and direct them. So before we filmed the movie, we did a little bit of rehearsal with Gray Scott and I in Scott's backyard. And he actually built the size of the platform that we were gonna be on. He built a version of that that's literally like this big. It was tiny. That was the first thing I remember when I saw it. I was like, how are we gonna be a hundred feet up, two of us on this tiny, tiny, tiny platform? I can be laying back like this. We basically blocked out the movie. You know, it was kind of a stage beyond the writing where we reformed it, changed it, and they they, they felt what was right and what they would do and how they might sleep and stand and sit and just naturally kind of feel out the bones of this thing. I could, I could be away and then look and kind of get I mean, if I'm like roll this, over, my ankle like feel. roll over as the night, because I'm kind of restless. And I was able to rehearse through the movie with them, up close with them in an intimate kind of good directing environment so that when we went to set the week later and went up to the tower, we had a frame of reference. My biggest concern was I was like, I told Scott I was not afraid of heights. I cannot let him know that I'm kind of freaking out right now. Good luck, Jenny. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I got this now. So I was just really trying to play it off like, yeah, this is awesome. I'm not scared at all when I was up there like, oh God. So what attracted you to this project? <laughs> not this. <laughs> when you get up there and the platform is tiny, the wind kicks in and it starts to move a little bit and it feels real scary up there. Grace and I would just go home at the end of the week and be like, what did we sign up for? We're gonna die on this movie. I can't explain it. I mean, the air, the air feels different. It, it, and you're looking down, you, you feel this, Whew, like this stomach drop a little bit being that high. That just really adds to the fear and adds to like, you could fall off this thing in a heartbeat. Like there's no space up there. It's just this adrenaline rush of, holy cow, this is so immersive. 
this is what I was hoping it was going to be like, and it is, and this feels like old movie making. I mean, we are out here and up here. With the adage that you want to do everything for real, it means doing the stunts for real. Hunter! <laughs> Apart from the opening sequence, it, it's all real. Come back up! Hunter, no! Hunter! Ginny and Chris both rose to the challenge and did it themselves. It was never expected for us to do our stunts. It was always offered if we wanted to try it. I think there was just so much curiosity on my part and Ginny's to try it that we, we did. Okay. We did all of our own stunts. We were actually hanging on with one hand. It was terrifying. We really needed to be in good physical shape to be able to do this movie. I had blisters on my hands from climbing that ladder. We would be climbing that tower for hours every day, up and down, up and down. You know, you do a take climbing up, you got to climb back down to do another take to climb back up. They had to wrap our hands in CGI the wraps out at certain points because our hands were just getting so torn up from climbing this thing so many times. On a certain shot where Grace grabs a ladder and we'd rig the camera to a ladder and I, I really wanted that kind of going over the edge of a roller coaster feeling. Did all this stuff thinking I'm gonna use a double. And Grace is like, can I just do it? Can I just like do the fall? I was like, are you sure? And I think because I was comfortable with it in small bits, when we got to the actual main ladder drop moment, I was really excited because I thought, I can do this. I've done the other things. I, I can do this. I want to do this. <laughs> Capturing that, keeping it all real, is is key. Audiences want the real deal. And for this movie, it lives or dies on capturing that reality. Are you okay? Yeah. Do you get hurt? Ow. It's a storm. It's kind of beautiful up here. It did feel like the desert was the diva of the shoot. The elements were crazy. Grace and I would just be like clutching on for dear life, which helped our performances, but we were actually up there like clutching on for dear life. How's it going, producer? I think about just going back into the like, live gallery. But... We should have done it on Grace Kitchen, man. Should have just done it. Yeah. Yeah. Looks so good. I just I wish you could film something, right? The engineers had told us, if winds get over, I think, 30 miles an hour at the top of this thing, the girls can't go up the tower, right? Because structurally, there is a risk there that the tower's going to come down, right? So after 30 miles an hour, it's off. 50 miles an hour and above, we're in trouble. Yeah, I've never seen this weather in the desert no. like this. No. We had 60 mile per hour winds at one point, so we couldn't film because the tower was shaking. Because the risk of the things coming down, we all had to rush into this little hut, which was our only shelter, in case it collapsed. And we were like, oh my God, this is a disaster. I want to stop, eh? And then we had thunderstorms that came in. It just started heavily raining, warm rain, like odd conditions. So what's happening? Uh, so it's raining, it's the hottest day yet, and it's raining, and the rain is uh, is melting the towers. Yeah. Okay. Oh, man. And on top of that, we found out that the tower somehow was built on top of some sort of flying ant nest. There was a sheet around the tower of flying ants. They would land on your hair and land all over you, and it was disgusting. Uh, uh, we've had an infestation of flying ants, and um, we can't get close to the tower because there are so many. Um, oh, man. We just got hit with like thing after thing after thing, but I think it really did like lend itself to the survival aspect of this film. Like, we definitely were feeling that in real life, too. Trying to fight the elements and fight the weather and fight reality just doesn't work. And we kind of surrendered to it and just embraced it all. And when we embraced it all, 
it just delivered, delivered the goodness. The biggest thing was because of the weather and what we were up against, sometimes we were switching scenes around. So before we prepped the movie, Scott kind of told Grace and I, prepare like a play, kind of be prepared to do any scene at any time because we don't know how the weather is going to be cooperating. So realistically, that was the biggest challenge, was uh, having some moments where we had to just switch the schedule around. We'll get there. That's where Grace and I worked really well together, was we would just say, okay, let's sit down. We're going to run this, the shit out of this for 20 minutes, and then we're just going to go. And we were just kind of like on our feet, ready to do anything at any time. Yay! When, when I start designing the film, I say, oh, I'll have this shot and it'll develop into this and this will look like this and thinking all the things the director does. And in the end, it was like, we're just looking to get the camera rolling in the air, right? So like technically, it, it was the most challenging film I've ever been involved with, for sure. Just to be able to film was so difficult. It's pretty miraculous that we got as much as we did actually shot. It's, it's miraculous we have a movie. <laughs> The USP of this film is not gore and, and extreme horror. It's actually the tension, suspense, implied horror that's a bit more unique than that. And I was very aware that, yeah, the key thing to this film was not actually something that needed to be a restricted movie. When we were filming the movie, we didn't know if we were R or if we were PG-13. So I said the F word so many times. I think Scott wanted to kill me in post when we were trying to get a PG-13 rating. They're what? stealing my car! What? There was quite a bit of swearing uh, that Ginny and I both did, both of us did. And we got to the end of the movie and realized, oh, we got a great movie, but no one's going to see it because it's a restricted R. And the audience that I really want to see it, like my kids and people of that age and the younger audience, they're just not going to be able to get to see it. And the district of Lionsgate was the same. They're like, OK, we love the movie, but we can't release it wide. We can't, there's a limited audience to this movie because it's restricted. It's like, right, we're gonna have to reshoot it if we're gonna be able to change that fact. But for a movie like this, we can't reshoot it. We're not a big tentpole, we're a small movie. We don't have the resources, we don't have the time more than anything else. And really what saved this movie and brought it into a wider audience was, was technology. Rather than having to go back and do a bunch of reshoots, they're able to recreate you in AI and change your mouth that isn't gonna put us in an R rating category. And now we're stuck on this stupid freaking tower in the middle of freaking nowhere. We were able to change dialogue, change performances, essentially do a post-production reshoot of the movie and enable that to get a, a, a better certificate. What are we gonna do? Hey, we're not gonna panic. I have no clue what bits have been changed. As far as I know, uh, every movement my mouth made in that movie, my mouth made. Like without the technology, this would have been a small, restricted film that had a much smaller audience, uh, potential audience. And then being able to use the technology to open it out to a wider audience, I think, gives the film its best shot at, at being seen and enjoyed. This is a film that you have to see in a movie theater. This is a movie that plays so well when you are really in a dark room on a big screen experiencing this with an audience. When I go to the cinema, I want an experience. I want to feel the fear of falling. I want to get sweaty palms, right? I really want people's heart to be pounding. And I think the film grammar of this movie, it puts you into that world. That it's not just watching and witnessing, it's about point of view, it's about tapping into the person to make it a theatrical experience. It being so large and up there in front of you, I think people will get to have a little bit of a feeling of what I got to experience. <laughs> you know, seeing, seeing how high up we were and the scale is immersive. Every cinematic experience that I can remember that, that stood the test of time with me personally has been when I've really experienced something and I felt like I experienced it in the best environment ever. And I think, you know, shooting this movie for IMAX and for the big screen and doing it that way, it was really to kind of play into that and, and, and really bring like this huge theatrical experience to an audience. If you want to be scared, freaked out, and challenged by your comfort level, because the heights are so terrifying, you should watch this. <laughs>